Okay, so this is my setup. Nothing fancy, it's just a corner of my study room. So you don't need a elaborate setup to do a painting, but you do need a dedicated space, even if it's just a corner of a room like this. And the reason of that being you don't want to spend 10, 15 minutes to set up just to paint because by the time you finish set up, your motivation is half gone. So you always want a dedicated space for your painting that's ready to go. All you need is to maybe fill up some water, turn on the light and you're ready to go. So this is my setup. So this is a drawer cabinet that I bought from Ikea and the size is really nice. So I have my spare paper and my past painting all stored here. There's a couple of drawers, so I also have some material tools and etc. stored there. So I set up my easel and my palette on top of that, so that makes a really nice surface for me to work on. So this is a French easel that I have for a very, very long time. I used to paint in oil. So this French easel I got when I was still in art school. Now it's too heavy for me to take it out for to doing plein air with it. So I thought I just use this at home in my home studio. So what's nice about the French easel is that I can adjust this up and down. I can adjust how much tilt I want. And I also have this drawer that I can store my paint and some of my paintbrush here. So I use Daniel Smith's paint. I'll go over the paint that I use. And the reason I use Daniel Smith is that, um, well, it's good quality paint. And also they're made in Seattle and I live in Seattle. So it makes sense for me to use them. But you probably won't go wrong with any good quality paint. Holbein, Windsor Newton, they're all very good quality paint. And recently I heard Mission has very good quality paint as well. So. Just don't use student brand because the consistency is really weak. You're actually going to use more if you buy a lower quality paint. So try to get a good artist grade paint. I haven't tried every brand out there. I don't find the need to. Um, they work well with me, so I just use them. So the paper I use most of the time is Sonder Waterford. And I like to use watercolor block a lot and it's glued on the side and I don't need to stretch it and I don't need to tape it on the board so when I do a painting I just have to lay it out like that and I can move it around I can tilt it when I'm done I can just use a palette knife and just detach the sheet from the glue and then you have a fresh sheet of paper underneath so I use this a lot it's most convenient and even out in the plein air this is very useful for me now I use Sonder mostly because I like how the paper feel it's very smooth even though it still has some texture I use rough paper exclusively it still has some nice texture but it feels really good with the brush and the brush can glide on the paper very easily I used to use arches, so I also use arches paper, but I don't use quite often because I like the sander much better. Arches paper is a little bit harder on the brush than the sanders. Even though they're both rough texture, arches paper is much rougher. And also arches emit this weird smell when I put wet paint on it for some reason so I don't really like that but Arches makes a really good paper as well so if you can get over it with that fact you can still use them just okay another thing to note is that Arches paper dry a lot slower so when you're just beginning trying to paint Arches might be good for you because you have more time to play around with it so I have a board here um, just so that I have a good surface for me to put my paper on and I also have a wall shelf here that I install myself and this is the GoPro that I use to record my painting video and then I also have a iPad attached here so when I paint I have my reference right next to me ready to go this is always connect to the power so I don't need to worry about battery power and things like that and also the wall shelf has a clamp light that clamp on it so this is my lighting i'm turning it off so you can actually see it so i have an led light bulb 
and this also has a fluorescent light ring around it. I forgot how much this is. I remember it's quite a bit of money because I invested in when I was still in art school. But if you don't want to invest in this light, normal clamp light with a good LED light bulb like this will do just fine. Okay, so this is very important. So make sure that the light bulb you get is 5000K or above. Okay, because it gives you a nice neutral daylight. So just to give you an example, this is the color that you're seeing in 5000 Kelvin, which is a pretty nice neutral daylight color. Now I switch to a tungsten light and you can see the overall color become very, very yellow. And that's not something that you want because it will throw off your color. When you mix in color, you will keep trying to mix cooler color just to offset that. So make sure you have a good lighting temperature to have a neutral daylight color for your painting. Don't use a color like this. So this is the palette that I use. I also have another palette that's just for the portrait or a figure because I want cleaner color on my portrait palette. But the color is mostly the same. Now I have my water bucket here, I have my spray bottle, I have a rack here to dry my brush. I have my brushes set up here. I use this palette for landscape, cityscape, still light, whatever. And the color that I lay out are from warm to cool. And you can lay that out any way you want to, as long as you know where you can find your color without sinking. So I want warm color, I just dig into here. And if I want some cool color, and I just do here. There's few colors that I use that I really use and I really reload them. There are, more, there are some colors that I use a lot more like cobalt blue and neutral tint. I use them a lot more. So I tend to reload them a little bit more. Color that I use are lemon yellow, Hanson yellow deep, cadmium orange, cadmium red, carmine, which is a very nice pink plumish color. I like that color a lot, but it's very strong. So a little bit of that will really spread through your palette and mixtures. And this is alizarin crimson. It's very similar, but it's darker and colder. And this is raw sienna. I really use this color. Yellow ochre. This is burnt sienna. Burnt umber. I probably need to reload some of this. This is neutral tin, which is pretty much a black color like paints gray, but uh, this is not as dirty. This is cobalt teal blue. This is cobalt turquoise. This is cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and cerulean blue. And there's some other colors here that I actually forgot. I think this is cerulean blue too, and this is sap green. I actually never used that. I put that in when I just start painting, and now I just mix my own green. And this is cadmium yellow medium, and this is just white gouache, etc. And I rarely clean my palette because when I paint cityscape or landscape, I like to pick up whatever leftover color that's here. So just add some waters and you get some of a nice neutral gray here. So I use a variety of different brushes and this brush is by Escoda. These two big ones are Aquarios. Those are the big mop brush. I think this is Scroll Hair. And as you can see, they are the Joseph's Bookfish signature brush. So these two brush are used to make big washes. And they are very nice because they hold a lot of water. So when you're doing a big broad wash, these two brush are really nice for that. It holds a lot of water and you don't have to reload as much. And coming down to the size, these are also from Escoda. This is Perla. These two, 12 and 8, these two brush are more for smaller shape, detail works. These two are synthetic brush, so they tend to go out a little bit sooner in a couple months or so. Depends on how often you paint. Now, um, especially if you use a lot of tips, and then this tend to go out fairly quickly. But these brush are not as expensive as the bigger ones, so you can replace them a little bit more often. For portraits, I have different brush. This is also from Escoda. Uh, this brush is a Kolinsky brush. 
and Kolinsky brush are softer so it's good better for a softer shape and some free shape I actually use this brush quite often for for trees and uh, vegetations but I also use this brush a lot for portrait painting because in portrait painting you want a little bit softer brush okay and this is a Da Vinci brush it's a number six Kolinsky brush now I use this brush a lot mainly for the portrait so I really use this one for cityscape and landscape and here I have tiny small riggers for fine detail works and um, there's a lot of brand out there so you can just pick the one that you like this is very very little so I only use it when I really just need some very very fine line details I also have this brush, uh, this rosemary brush. This brush has an interesting shape that's, that's very nice to use for vegetations or branches and leaves when you're painting things like trees and some other organic shapes. So for sketching, this is the pencil that I use. This is monograph. This is a mechanical pencil. You just press it down and out come the lead. Now one thing to notice is that I use a 4B lead. So what that means is that it's very soft, so it won't damage the paper as much, but it also become very dark. So I usually draw very, very light unless I want some dark mark. And the reason I use mechanical pencil instead of um, traditional pencil because that I don't need to keep sharpening it and it will always have a very nice fine point. Any mechanical pencil will do one from dollar store will just do fine as long as you can find a um, maybe 4B lead for your pencil and you should be fine. So this is it for my setup and material. As I said, you don't need a elaborate expensive setup and you don't need a big studio space. As long as you have a dedicated space for your painting, you'll be fine and the important thing is to have a dedicated space that is ready to go so when you want to paint when you plan to paint you can just go there switch the light and you're ready to go so now let's start to learn how to paint watercolor